Recently, Robert Freeman, who was the iconic photographer of the Beatles' first four or five albums, passed away, sadly. I want to look at some of these covers with you, specifically two, and let's take a look at how he created these. First of all, the first cover with the Beatles, you can see a very tiny shot of it here and a much bigger one. And I'm going to tell you the story from Paul McCartney of actually how he lit it. It was very simple. It wasn't in a studio. This is something we should all remember that lighting doesn't have to be complex. As you look at this, you can see that the faces are all lit from one side and shadowed on the other side. Now, who does that remind you of? If you've been paying attention to AYP, you should know that answer. It's our old friend Vermeer who lit his subjects from a northern window, just obviously one light source. And then, of course, everything that wasn't facing that source was shaded. And you can see that Robert Freeman used that same lighting style with the Beatles. It's very dramatic. Some of the songs that you may or may not remember from this album with the Beatles. It won't be long, All My Lovin'. These are the handwritten lyrics from George for Don't Bother Me. This was his first song recorded by the Beatles. Hold Me Tight, again, the handwritten lyrics. Isn't that cool, you guys? Just to see that creativity spark right there on the page. And for me, the most famous of all Beatles songs, I Want to Hold Your Hand, this is what exploded into America in 1963 or 64. I think it was 1964. It really changed the world forever. That simple song, I Want to Hold Your Hand. Let's catch up with what Paul McCartney said about those shoots. And he just said this recently. Dear Robert Freeman has passed away. He was one of our favorite photographers during the Beatles years who came up with some of the most iconic album covers. Besides being a great professional, he was imaginative and a true original thinker. People often think that the cover shot for Meet the Beatles, or with the Beatles in England, of our foreheads in half shadow was a carefully arranged studio shot. In fact, it was taken quite quickly by Robert in the corridor of a hotel we were staying in where natural light came in from the windows at the end of the corridor. I think it took no more than half an hour to accomplish. So I think what's amazing about that is that he did shoot it in the corridor of a hotel. He just used one light source, just like Vermeer. You can see how their right side is lit, meaning the light source was on their right, but the left side is in deep shadow. It's a very dramatic photograph. But again, it's our old friend Vermeer, who if you've been following AYP and you've heard from Bob Holmes how he really loves Vermeer lighting, it's super simple, one lighting source. It's something anybody can use. You don't have to go out and get a lot of fancy equipment. Just set up in your house, your room, your apartment, wherever you've got. Try to find a north-facing window, which is what Vermeer used, but it doesn't really matter. We're, we actually shot with a south-facing light right now. The idea is you have a light source that hits only one side of the subject's face, and that's Vermeer lighting. The next cover that Robert Freeman shot is a really pivotal album called Rubber Soul. And there is the cover, and there's a really interesting story. Again, we're going to hear from Paul McCartney about that. And it shows you the power of just going with the flow and finding that amazing twist in the image, turning it on its head, literally. So we'll take a look at that. Some of the songs in this album were Day Tripper. Look at that. It looks like it almost says Day Tripper. It's funny, you know, it's how these songs evolve, but I think it is actually Day Tripper. We can work it out. If you're like me, you hear the title of this song and it just starts playing right along in your head. I've got these things emblazoned in my mind. Drive My Car, again, handwritten lyrics, Norwegian Wood. This song has a lot of interesting firsts in it. There were no drums in it. Interesting. And then the very memorable Michelle love song. So, Let's take a look at how he created this cover. Okay, now in the case of Rubber Soul, which if you look at that photograph, you see it has almost a fisheye look to it. But this is what Paul McCartney said about how that shot was done. Bob also took the Rubber Soul cover. His normal practice was to use a slide projector and project the photos he'd taken onto a piece of white cardboard, which was exactly album-sized thus giving us an accurate idea of how the finished product would look. 
During his viewing session, the card which had been propped up on a small table fell backwards, giving the photograph a stretched look. Instead of simply putting the card upright again, we became excited at the idea of this new version of his photograph. He assured us that it was possible to print it this way, and because the album was titled Rubber Soul, we felt that the image fitted perfectly. Isn't that amazing? So looking at that album cover, first of all, he did an amazing job with the composition where he got all these guys together and he shot looking up at them. If you've read my book, Advancing Your Photography, you know I talk about how powerful it is to use different angles. Don't always shoot at eye level looking straight across at your subject. You, you can look down, you can look up, you can do all sorts of things. So in this case, he had the vision to look up and how accidentally the card fell back and gave it that stretched look. Okay, how cool is that? The stretched look with the album title Rubber Soul giving it a great metaphor in that photograph. So that's a good lesson to learn. Sometimes we have happy accidents and you should just go with the flow. Try that out sometime yourself. How could you make a photograph that's just got a slight twist to it? Something a little different that makes it pop. I'd love to see what you come up with. And if you think about it, this was all done, quote, in post. The photograph essentially was done. He was just demonstrating what it looked like. But then they came up with this accidental twist. So your photograph isn't really complete until it's totally done and printed and out there to the world. And one thing I just want to point out again is you have to gather your inspiration from anywhere, from other photographers, from looking at books of art and looking at books, in this case of photographs and even music. Hey, listen, we had a great photographer, Joseph Holmes. His inspiration came from going to the last Beatles concert. That's kind of amazing because he's a landscape photographer but that inspired him and he mentioned that in one of our interviews. So grab those books, go to the museums, listen to music, gather your inspiration wherever you can find it. That's all part of the creative process. So there you have it, the amazing iconic work of Robert Freeman. Look at what you've learned from it. Use that simple one lighting source. Don't be afraid to play with your images. Maybe you'll come out with something as remarkable as Rubber Soul. I love having you guys with me. I love hearing your comments, reading them, so make sure you leave them down here. And while you're at it, please subscribe if you haven't already. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.